Sonic, the heart of your system. There's no doubt ASRock are bringing out the big guns with the X570 Aqua and really showing what they're capable of. The Aqua is currently the only X570 board to feature a full cover water block built into the motherboard. But unlike traditional third party full cover blocks, ASRock have implemented theirs in a way where it seamlessly ties in with the rest of the board. From top to bottom, we have this beautiful aluminum design covering nearly the entire board. I'll touch base with more detail on this full cover block later on in this video. Other highlights on the Aqua include a quaintier 10 gigabit ethernet, ADA2 11AX Wi-Fi 6 networking, dual Thunderbolt 3 with Type-C ports, and of course we have ASRock's newly implemented built-in IO shield. When it comes to packaging, I really find the need to go into detail here, but with the Aqua, ASRock have really stepped it up, and so they should. At a price tag of US$999 per board, I'm really glad it wasn't in a standard anti-static bag thrown in the box. ASRock has created a wonderful experience with this white and silverish box that comes with a neat carry handle. The box pulls up from the top where you're presented with nothing but an envelope. As mine is a review sample, you may notice the GGF events print. Consumer models will be left blank with the run number instead as only 999 units are being produced. Inside the envelope is a card with a nice thank you note for selecting this motherboard. You'll also find a credit card size card which I guess resembles a kind of unique members club card as it would have your numbered board printed on it. Once removing the top layer from the box, the experience keeps going and here we find the motherboard itself sitting on this black suede foam material. The next layer down, there are four small compartments, one containing standard cables, the other with the Wi-Fi accessories, the third housing the water block parts and the last holding the manual and other documents. Moving over to the board itself, as I guess that's what we're all here for, you'll find an EATX form factor, which is pretty standard for high-end motherboards these days. One thing to note, this board is heavy, and I mean heavy. With nothing installed on the board bar the included block, it comes in at 2.75 kilograms. And for reference, the ASRock X570 Tai Chi comes in at 1.3 kilograms. Taking a closer look at the full cover block, and the reason for being such a heavy board is the whole cover is made from aluminum. I've used boards like this before, but never have they been all aluminum, normally the top material is plastic. There are four main parts that make up the cover, the left IO part which doesn't need removing, the two M.2 heatsinks, and lastly the full cover block itself, which is nickel plated copper with only the external housing being aluminum and not the internal parts. If for some reason you wish to remove the exterior aluminum cover and go with the full cover block only, you can, but personally I do think it looks a little off. The block comes pre-installed on the board with thermal pads already applied. A spare set of thermal pads are included, which is a nice touch. Details on removing the water block are all detailed in the manual, and I had no issues here. With the removal of 10 screws, the block comes off. Simply install your desired CPU with thermal paste, remove the protective block plastic, and mount the water block back on. I'm also glad to note that the two M.2 heatsinks are now separate to the full cover design. As previously seen on some of ASRock's other boards, they were one whole piece, which meant changing M.2 SSDs was a bit of a mission. While the cover is off, we can see the board in more detail and find the board has a cutout for SATA ports, with the top and bottom right corners of the board shimmed off which I guess is for aesthetic reasons to complement the angular design of the cover. Starting with power delivery, ASRock have gone with a 14-phase IR digital PWM and a R3 555 driver and MOSFET module with 60 amps per phase. VRM temperature tests showed decent temperatures throughout, and with my 3900X and after 10 minutes of 8 to 64 CPU test, saw the FETs and chokes max out at around 34 degrees. Just to note, this is on my premature Praxis test bench with one EKXE360 radiator and the GPU not included in the loop. CPU temps we saw the 3900X maxing out at around 60 degrees in the same test. After running Cinebench R20 a few times, the CPU maxed out at 71 degrees, while after 30 minutes of Battlefield 5, saw 59 degrees on the 3900X. Memory support is up to DDR4 5000MHz, and like my previous X570 memory testing, I had no issues running the optimal 36-3800MHz memory speeds for that 1 to 1 ratio. Moving on to storage, we find a total of 8 SATA ports, 4 running off the AMD chipset, while the remaining 4 running off an ASMedia ASM1061 chip. Two Hyper M.2 slots can also be found, 
with both supporting NVMe PCIe Gen 4 x4 SSDs, while the second M.2 slot supporting SATA based SSDs as well. As I said earlier, these now have their individual heatsink covers, which makes installation and removing a breeze. With both M.2 slots populated with the Sabrent Rocket 1TB NVMe Gen 4 SSD and configured to RAID 0, I saw speeds of over 9000 megabytes a second read and over 8000 megabytes a second write, which is just insane. Just to note, and as advised by Fireson themselves, that when testing Fireson E16 Gen 4 based NVMe SSDs, it's recommended to change the thread setting in Crystal Disk Mark from 1 thread to 8 threads. From what I can see, this could be due to this controller having 8 channels. And after a few runs of testing the drives, saw M.2 slot 1 reach 54 degrees, while M.2 slot 2 reach 56 degrees. Not bad at all. Three physical PCIe Gen 4 16x steel slot PCIe slots can be found with a maximum bandwidth of 8x, 8x, 4x before three slots are populated. Azrock have also included three Gen 2 1x slots as well on the Aqua. Network connectivity on the Aqua is decent with the inclusion of an Intel i211AT 1 gigabit adapter, an Aquantia AQC 107 10 gigabit adapter, and lastly an Intel 802.11ax Wi-Fi module providing Wi-Fi 6 speeds. As I've tested Wi-Fi 6 quite a lot on my previous X570 boards, I won't cover it again here, but I have been able to transfer files for speeds of up to 150 megabytes a second over the Wi-Fi 6 interface. But as this is my first X570 board with 10 gigabit ethernet, I thought I'd see how well that would perform. With another PC running the same network adapter and an NVMe SSD, I was able to copy 23 gigabytes of data at roughly 900 megabytes a second and took only 15 seconds to complete. Quite impressive. Another standout feature on the Aqua is the inclusion of Thunderbolt 3, and Azrock seemed to be one of the few including it on some of their new boards, and on the Aqua they've managed to fit in two 40 gigabit ports at the rear. I myself don't use Thunderbolt 3 on a daily basis, but managed to snag Sabrin's new Thunderbolt 3 USB drive. With some quick tests, I was able to achieve speeds of roughly 2700 megabytes a second for read and write. If Thunderbolt 3 doesn't interest you, these two ports will now run at standard USB 3.2 Gen 2 10 gigabit speeds instead. One downside to the two Type-C Gen 2 ports on the rear is that there are now no Gen 2 Type-A ports. All the USB Type-A ports on the rear run at Gen 1. One USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C front panel header can be found, while two standard USB 3.2 Gen 1 headers can be found as well. Five fan headers are also included with all having water pump support. Audio wise, once again, ASRock have gone with the Realtek ALC 1220 audio codec, which they basically use on most of their boards. I think for a board at this price point, an audio solution with an onboard DAC would have been a nice touch. ASRock have also included their BIOS flashback feature into the Aqua. I find this an amazing tool and essentially allows you to update or downgrade your BIOS without the need of having a CPU or memory installed. Other brands have similar features to flashback but still require the system to post. And of course, ASRock have implemented RGB into the Aqua with addressable RGB accents coming from the IO part of the cover and also from the chipset area of the block. There is no edge board lighting, which I think is a good idea to go with. Maybe some rear IO port illumination may have been nice. The built-in RGB lighting can all be controlled via ASRock's polychrome RGB software. Three RGB headers are located on the board with two being at the bottom right and one being at the top right of the board. Only one of these three are the newer 3 pin 5 volt addressable RGB headers. I really wish ASRock would add another one up the top of the board as well. For rear I.O. ASRock have opted to go with their new built in adjustable I.O. cover and we've covered this quite a bit in the past and find it works well. As not all cases are made equal, sometimes their fixed I.O. cover might not line up exactly. With ASRock's I.O. there are slight movements in all directions for better fitment. Now I really wanted to throw the Aqua in a build to see how it looks, so let's get started.
Wow, what can I say? What a board and what a build this turned out. Now, there's just a few little things I want to cover first before I go over this build in detail. Now, first off, I do want to thank ASRock for sending this board out. They did have a select few uh, reviewers and modders to check out this board. And you may have noticed there is the GGF Events print, which is on the bottom of the bottom of the cooler of the board. Now, that will be changed to the number which consumers will receive. Now, I did reach out to ASRock to see if the reviewer models were included in the 999 being produced. And I was told that they aren't. All reviewers and models were sent extra boards uh, just specifically designed for them. Now, when I mean designed for them, the board is exactly the same, nothing has changed. The only thing is their sort of name printed on the board. So there's still 999 models to be purchased. Now, I wanna go over price. I did say it's earlier, but you're looking at 999 US dollars. That is US or 1599 Australian dollars. Now, yes, it is expensive. It does make it the most expensive X570 board, but being such a niche quantity being produced, 999, it is going to bump up manufacturing costs. And I guess this could be the beginning for ASRock. We've seen this from Azus and Aorus. They've all had boards with full cover water box on it in the, in the past. So this might just be a bit of a trial and error for ASRock to see how it goes. And in the future, we may see more. Yeah, in saying that, I had no issues whatsoever with this board, and I'm actually glad that ASRock held off uh, by releasing this board at the initial X570 launch. It's been probably about two months or so now, I think, since it was uh, X570 was launched. So any kinks have been ironed out. When I say that, kinks, uh, there are still issues with the rise in platform at the moment on X570. Nothing is perfect, but I'm glad it didn't come out at the very start, and then people might've been thinking, well, this board is $999. Uh, I they may be thinking it is affected with launch issues, but, um, but yeah, as I said, no issues with this board. Everything worked fine. Uh, rating the SSDs, uh, temperature results, it was just rock solid stable. Uh, one thing I do wanna cover, if you were listening carefully in the review, the R3 PCIe one by slots, now they are Gen 2, not Gen 4. Now I specifically reached out to ASRock to see if they had a typo on their website, but no, they are Gen 2, only because they've had to pull some of the bandwidth from those slots and move it over to the Thunderbolt 3 because there are two of those ports on this board. But in saying that, uh, I don't think many people would use the PCI Gen, or sorry, the PCI 1 by slots and being Gen 2, I don't think that's gonna matter as opposed to Gen 4. Now, for those who aren't into water cooling, but they're like, hey, I do like the features on this board, ASRock feature the X570 Creator. It is basically the exact same board, minus the little cutouts on the PCB, and minus the whole water block and full cover design. Now, I must admit, it is a sort of bland looking board. Um, I would say it is sort of a sensible, uh, professional looking board, and that comes in at half the price. So basically, exactly half. 499, 499 US dollars or 829 Australian. So you're still getting the same amount of PCI Express slots, same amount of power delivery, and of course the dual Thunderbolt 3, the 10 gigabit ethernet and the Wi-Fi 6. So that's just a bit of a reference to showcase where this sits in terms to that creator board. Now, one sort of minor little issue, there is a bit of coolant bleed. Now this does happen on a lot, especially distro uh, channels uh, that are produced like the one over here. There is some sort of bleed up the top where the inlet port is. It's not very major, you can't really see it, but uh, yeah, there is a little bleed just to uh, take note. It's not on the outlet because that is completely covered, you can't see it, but yeah, on that inlet, it is there. But um, yeah, let's talk about the build. That's pretty much the board, really happy with this board. Um, it's just that price is killer. Uh, if you do want it, you're gonna have to fork out the 999 US dollars. Now talking about the build, I kind of went with the approach that uh, less is more. I really wanted to showcase this, this board and I went with no other than the Inwind Tower uh, 2.0, that is this chassis. It's been out for quite a while now. It's been at end of life for quite a while and I'm really keen to see what Inwin do with an Inwin uh, Tower 3.0. I'm sure they're brainstorming now at the moment, thinking about ideas to try and uh, to try and surpass this case. I just love how when the system is off, I'll show you a bit of B-roll with the system off, you flick that power switch, all the LEDs turn on and it just lights up the whole system. And specifically with this board, it just lights it up beautifully, which I think just blends in perfectly. And as I said, less is more. It's a really simple build. You've got really just the board, the video card, and then the Bixky water channel over to the right, just being connected with tubes. I added a bottom basement just to hide all the cables, and that was it. Uh, really simple build, but it just really pops. And I've already thrown this up on Facebook, and from what I've seen so far, everyone really does love it. 
Now, one big thing a lot of people are talking about, yes, I did use a 1080 Ti. Like, I could have used an RTX, like I've got one sitting on the shelf right there that uh, doesn't even have a cooler on, but I specifically uh, went out and picked up this XSP full cover water block for it. Now, they do have an RTX version, but it doesn't come in the pure chrome. It comes in like a black nickel. I wanted the pure chrome, so I had to fall back to a 1080 Ti because this build was really about aesthetics, not so much on the performance side of things. And then finally enough, the uh, back plate that comes with this XSP, XSPC block is black, which I thought was strange because the whole block is chrome and they go after the uh, black uh, back plate on top. So I went out and grabbed an EK chrome back plate I uh, put them both together, they did fit, and then it just turned out really, really nice. It just all blends in. And also with this XSP, XSPC block, the uh, window underneath, you might think it's acrylic, but it is actually glass that uh, stops the coolant from coming out. I'll get a shot up there, so that is nice. Not that it really matters, but it's probably over time gonna stop uh, coolant discoloration and so on. Uh, some other things, of course, had to go with G-School uh, Royale memory. That is the silver. It just blends in perfectly with this chassis. Of course, uh, Bixky distro uh, plate over onto the right and uh, Bixky fittings as well. Bixky chrome tube. Uh, Cable Mod Pro cables with their anodized. First time I've used their anodized combs. These are the new ones. So these, of course, are the blue. I think that's the sky blue. Uh, not quite the same as the coolant, but it's going to be very hard to match anodized with other colors, especially blue. And uh, that's pretty much it. So let us know what you think on this build. I actually might keep this up for a little bit longer. I just love how it looks. Um, just, yeah, all the lights and so on. It came out really good. But um, yeah, as for the board, let me know what you think. Will you be picking up uh, one of these? Are you impressed with this board? Do you think this is just the beginning for ASRock and so on? But yeah, I just want to thank ASRock for sending this out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.